fourth century patriarch of Constantinople, St. John Chrysostom, commenting on the wealth he saw on the altar and in the church around him, gave a sermon that makes reference to something Jesus says today. Do you wish to honor the body of Christ? Do not despise him when he is naked. Do not honor him here in the church building with silks, only to neglect him outside where he is suffering from cold and from nakedness. Of what use is it to load the table of Christ? Feed the hungry and then come and decorate the table. You are making a golden chalice and do not give a cup of cold water? The temple of your afflicted brother's body is more precious than this temple, the church. Jesus said, whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. In Matthew's Gospel, little ones are the disciples whom Jesus has sent into the world to share the good news. So, as we go about our daily lives trying to show others the difference that Christ has made in our lives, their response to us is a response to Jesus, and they will be rewarded. We are an opportunity for blessing for those whom we meet. However, Chrysostom touches on a point that we should consider today because it's one of the great obstacles to our being a source of blessing to the world. If people do not perceive something of Christ in us, we're not being true disciples of Christ. If we've not taken up the cross to follow Christ, how will our brothers and sisters see him today? When people see us, what do they see? A community of people who love Christ more than anyone or anything else? Men and women who are willing to give their lives for his sake and as he did for the sake of the world? In other words, do they see Christ in his church, the body of Christ? Yes and no. Perhaps they see the beautiful churches we've erected to the glory of God. Perhaps, too, they see the poor at the doors of those churches, hoping that Christians won't drive them away from sleeping on the steps. Perhaps they see our institutions of healing and learning. Perhaps they also see men and women who cannot have access to those institutions because they cannot afford their services. Perhaps they see our organizations that collect vast sums to assist the poor throughout the world. Perhaps they also see that much of that wealth is produced by economic and social systems that glorify possession over generosity, selfishness over sharing. Perhaps they see us calculating how little we need give to solve our consciences, but not factoring in the pained needs of the world. Perhaps they see our voluntary acts of service to the world. Perhaps they also see our selfishness, our complacency, our cruelty. Perhaps they read and are moved by our scriptures that speak of God's love for all of us. Perhaps, too, they see how little we allow that word to shape our lives. Perhaps they hear our prayers, sermons, and hymns, and sense in them the voice of God. Perhaps, too, they hear the backbiting, the slander, and the viciousness of so much that Christians say even about each other. Perhaps some of them even see me. Part of the call of Christ is a call to repentance. It's not something I can reserve to Lent or an occasional confession, because nearly my whole life is a naysaying to God, my whole life must be repentance. I must beg God for the grace and courage to say in deeds the yes I said in baptism when Christ called me to take up his cross and follow him. In fact, the grace and courage are always offered. When I am ready to accept them, perhaps then I will truly become one among the prophets and little ones who will draw the world to Christ.